Hi everybody! Welcome back! Today I will show you how I made plastic from mushrooms and all the good fun I had while doing it. That's a lie! A damn lie, man. That's not true. Warning! This project deals with highly corrosive chemicals and sketchy procedures and should not be used as a guide. Unless it is for your own suffering. So, the first step of this scientific endeavor is actually to collect mushrooms, which is harder than it looks. For this project, I chose a specimen of Meripilus giganteus, or something, and once I had a bucket load of it, I decided to head back to the lab. At first, I tried to cut it with a pair of scissors, but since it was not really cooperative, I just decided to tear it in strips. As a side note, I found that the texture and visuals of this mushroom really feels like some cooked chicken for some reason. But anyways, after tearing it apart for a while, I was hit by one of the main drawbacks of this project. <laughs> the smell. You see, the smell is not just bad, it's uh, beyond that, and I'll describe it later. Anyways, now what's left to do is just to cut it in little pieces, and with this one, that's one down and 200 to go. Once everything was chopped up in little cubes, I went on to make a strong sodium hydroxide solution. Once the solution was ready, I just added it to the mushrooms. Then it just started to bubble for some reason. I guess it's because there were some carbonates present. In terms of what's going on, the mushroom flesh is made up of a whole bunch of cells, and these cells are separated by cell walls. These cell walls are made of different types of sugar polymers, and one of them is called chitin, and this is the one we're after. What we want to do here is first to get rid of all the cell materials, the proteins, the lipids and everything, and just keep the cell walls. And for this, we'll just basically use sodium hydroxide. After letting this cursed marinade do its thing overnight, we are now granted with a much darker and syrupy liquid. As most cell material has been destroyed, what we want to do is get rid of it and just recover the pulp. And it is at this moment that I almost gave up. Why, you might ask? Well, because the smell became so unbearable that the two only words I can think of when trying to describe it are the following. Neglected genitals. What? Neglected genitals. Just let that sink in for a moment. Anyways, going onward, we can see that we got rid of most of the liquid and that the pulp is now much softer than before. I then proceeded to wash the pulp with slightly acidic water and then transfer it to another container. However, I didn't realize I had a whole bunch of highly corrosive waste that I could not just dump in the sewage. Therefore, I just added some acids to try to bring the pH down to neutrality. And of course, I overshot. Badly. In order to bring the pH up a little, I just added some sodium bicarbonate, hence the bubbling. I then added just a bit more, and this happened. Oh no, oh no, oh no, 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 no. <laughs> With that disaster barely avoided, I then decided to increase the surface area of the pulp a little, using a little persuasion. Now, I decided to dry the pulp in order to make it easier to crush and to make into a powder. Wow! 
once dried, I decided to use the huge mortar and pestle I just ordered from Amazon. But things did not turn out the way I wanted them to. Thankfully, I had a solution. We're now entering phase two of the chemical process, and this time again we will use sodium hydroxide. However, this time it doesn't have the same function as before. In fact, this time a much more concentrated solution will be used as it is able to convert chitin into chitosan, which can later be solubilized and recovered. For this, glass containers are not recommended and we will use plastic instead. However, in order not to melt it, we'll just use a DIY hot water bath. As always, when making such strong solutions of sodium hydroxide, things heat up a lot, so caution must be used. I tried to stir the solution using the magnetic stirrer, but I found that the mushroom pieces quickly jammed it, so I just gave up on that. Once the whole solution was added, all the pieces started to swell and made it basically impossible to mix. So, as one should do when in doubt, I just poked at it with a stick. After heating it for two hours, I decided to cut the power and let it cool off overnight. And the next morning, I was left with this mushroom gel. I then added water to wash it a little and proceeded to screen it. Once the pulp reached a somewhat neutral pH, I just put it aside and proceeded to the next step. What we are making here is a 2% ethanoic acid solution, more commonly known as just diluted vinegar. The reason for this is that the chitosan we made in the previous step is actually soluble in mildly acidic solutions. So this time again, it is just a matter of marinating, screening, washing and recovering, but this time what we keep is the juicy part. And now, in theory, if we make the solution basic again, we should precipitate our chitosan from the mix. Which somewhat surprisingly happened. Wow. After cutting the stirring, the particles start to settle down and I could recover them by filtration. Now, I just took everything and put it to dry. A couple days later, the solution had turned into some sort of a waxy coating, which unfortunately wasn't very strong and could be easily teared off from the plate. Since chitosan is not supposed to be either waxy or brown, I decided to perform all the previous steps again in order to purify it a bit. We are now left with a promising white precipitate and all that's left to do is leave it to dry. This time the resulting coating was transparent and much harder, though very brittle. Regardless of the yield that probably sits somewhere between awful and terrible percents, let's just enjoy the moment and call it a resounding success. Then, in order to make some sort of a plastic disc, I decided to reprocess everything and put it in a smaller container. However, this has failed on me many times and with each failed attempt I could see the amount of product I could recover slowly and slowly fading away. That's so sad. This is actually the closest I got. And when considering that it would not melt away when putting some ethanol on it, I decided to look at the bright side and call it again success. As a final test, I decided to add some glycerol to it and try to make it a flexible film. However, I added way too much and turned the whole thing into a goo that had absolutely no strength whatsoever. And when combining it all, this is what I'm left with. Wow! So to conclude, 
Can you make plastic from mushrooms? Yes. Should you do it? Absolutely not. Thank you for watching and we'll see you next time. Bye.